Hello, and welcome to another episode of DSI Live. I'm your host, Vanessa Emerson, founder of Dental Speaker Institute and Dental Speakers Bureau, and I'm really excited to be here with our friend, Margie Schaller. Hey, Margie. How you doing? Oh, welcome. Um, we're super excited to see you. And I know that as a result of being at Jumpstart recently, you have some exciting news to tell us about, but let me, before we go there, just um, give a little, uh, just a really little super nutshell version of a bio of, of Margie for anyone who doesn't know you. If you've been to Mar uh, if you've been to our um, Jumpstart conferences any of the last three years, you've had a chance to hear Margie from the main stage or concurrent session or pre-conference session, and um, and know that she is an expert in many things around presentation skills and content development. You might know her as the author of formulate a winning presentation. I've got the book over there. I didn't think to grab it ahead of time. I should have done, I'll hold it here. Formulate a winning presentation. It's available on Amazon, probably on her site too. Um, but I know that many of our jump starters have worked with you personally. I've um, not from talking to you, but when I work with them, they'll, they'll share with me that they've uh, worked with you personally, especially I think on our showcases and things in the last couple of years. Um, so Marky's way more than PowerPoint knowledge, which she definitely has PowerPoint knowledge. There's just much more that she has to share with us. And so with that said, I would love to um, welcome you, Margie, and tell us, we can't wait to hear, What's exciting? What came from Jumpstart? Well, thank you, Vanessa, and thank you, everybody. Um, I'm so excited because I spent a lot of time at Jumpstart talking to each one of you and finding out, you know, what was going on and, and how were things going. Vanessa, one of the things that I took away was people are so grateful that there are so many amazing presentation coaches out there. I mean, the room is packed with talent and, and people who they can go to. But the one thing that people kept saying was, I have all these notes, I have all these great ideas, I have all this stuff, I, I don't know when I'm gonna find the time to work on all of this. And da, 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 <laughs> I am launching something just to give people time to work on those things. It's called the Presentation Writers Retreat. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be three days of concentrated time specifically to write that amazing talk or to rewrite something that's kind of gotten a little stale perhaps. Yeah. It's going to be up here in Seattle in the um, Cascade foothills surrounded by the beautiful pine tree forests. There's lakes and rivers up here. And I'm going to be limiting this to six people. Ooh, small group. Because the idea is that this isn't about learning new things, although that will be part of it. It's about taking what we've learned and actually doing the work and actually walking away finally, not just with great ideas, but with the application and that finished product. Mm. So I don't think that there's anything else out there like this right now. There's a lot of places you can go to learn more great ideas, but bring the good ideas bring the good ideas to the retreat by keeping it at six people we can share what we've picked up from other places as well i think that's really powerful can i just interject i mean that appeals to me at a super <laughs> high level because i find that for me i will get all these ideas too and then they, I, I scribble them on little notes mm -hmm. or something i end up with all this all these notes accumulated and then when do you ever really carve out the time especially if you have kids or you know like a family you're doing things with or you have other interests outside of work like you don't really want to give up all your weekends um and, and I've, I've often thought if i could just reserve a weekend at a hotel where it's quiet or something where I could get away. Well, this is way better than that because you'd have the quiet, you'd be getting away, but you also have the instruction and colleagues instruction, not like, not the, uh, what's the word detraction <laughs> or like, you know, so it, you'd be able to stay connected to what you're wanting to do. You'd have the support of the group and you'd be in this separate environment. So I don't have to worry about feeding the cats and taking care of the kids. Right. Ah, well, and, and here's the model is I want it to be exactly like you're talking about. Let's just get away and, and do that work. So we're going to be staying at an Airbnb. Okay. And I'm going to be home cooking all the meals. 
Oh, okay. I want it to feel like it's family. I want it to feel like we're, we're there to, to support each other and to do this important work. You know, there's, there's almost nothing that we do that I can think of where we are as vulnerable as standing up in front of an audience of people. And it's a privilege and it's a gift to be able to do that. Do we give that moment enough of our time? And I'm just as guilty. I have done it too, where I'm on a plane fine tuning stuff at the last minute. But is that what our audience deserves? Or do they deserve like really focused time? And so you're right, there will be some guidance. My goal is to have little mini discussions and, and steps along the way. Because I, I have a process, I have a, the formula for a winning presentation. And, and so the goal would be that we'll have a 15 to 30 minute discussion on a step and then go have some work time. Mm. And then come back and maybe share with each other, maybe get some feedback from each other. I mean, when's the last time that you got feedback from another professional speaker as you're developing a talk? Mm. And then give them new set of instruction and then go do the work. Mm. That's really delicious. <laughs> well, here's what appeals to me about it is like you're, you're deepening relationships. You're in a comfortable environment. Um, you're able to bounce ideas off people. So if you get a writer's block, you have a coach there that can guide you. You, ha you, can, you can close your door and work. Um, I can take a walk in nature. Go, exactly, exactly. Tell me more about, it feels like the people that are there will be there all day, every day together. Yes. Um, so we're eating meals together, we're, we're working a little bit of the time, but then we go off to a separate room and do our work, or how, how's that structured? So the notion of having six people means that a home would have to be big enough to house all of us. So yes, we'll each have separate rooms, but my, my expectation is that there'll be bigger living rooms, perhaps porches, the weather should be beautiful, all three of the dates. Can I stop and just say what the dates are? Oh, yes, please. Yes. So we have um, three dates available. And the first one is going to be May 17th, or sorry, 14th to 17th. These are all Thursday through Sunday. The second one is July 23rd through 26th. And the last one is October 1st through 4th. So up here in the Seattle area, it is unpredictable what the weather's gonna be like, but those three times of year are typically gorgeous. So I'm hopeful that we'll have porch area to work on and be able to be indoors and outdoors. But the work that most people are gonna do is quiet enough that if three or four of us are sitting around a dining room table and doing the work, that's fine too. Yeah. But that's one of my other goals is I want to offer to make sure that every single person gets one-on-one -on -one time with me whether that's each day if they want, whether it's at certain moments if they want, so that they're getting that personalized ability to bounce things off of me, as well as then working with each other. Like you said, having other professionals, it's one of the beautiful things about Jumpstart, honestly, is sitting at meals together and saying, hey, you know, have you guys ever dealt with this situation before? Because you can't buy that kind of yeah. experience. Um, so I think that that is a huge value add is being able to do this with other people. I've done some, some workshops with speakers and I've, I've had working time available where they've gone and, and worked over a working lunch and gotten in groups of threes to do that. And I can't tell you the feedback that I got was amazing just because having somebody else there makes all that difference. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I know I'm on board. I'm coming in July. Yes. And I, you, I remember you telling me there's just a couple of seats left in July and in May, right? Just three or four seats left in each of those. So people will need to act quickly. How do they go about um, finding out more or signing up? Where do we go? What do we do? So the fastest thing to do would be to send me an email and I will immediately send you a link to our landing page. Um, so my email is margie, M-A-R-G-Y, at laserpointerpresentations.com. And all the information is there on that landing page as well as a link to go and actually register. Awesome. And do you have, is there a, a URL for the landing page or is it better to email it, you first? It's faster to email me. It's one of those long URLs. So. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, 
so if I'm developing a workshop or I'm developing a, you know, working out just on my consulting training modules, or if I'm developing a, a keynote or if I'm developing, I mean, could it be a book? I mean, is it really basically a happy presentation? Could it be what a, I threw you a curveball there. <laughs> so it's interesting you ask me that. My process is one that is designed to help you really get clarity on what your primary goal is with this, let's call it communication piece, right? Because all those things you just listed are all communication pieces. What is that one big main message? And what is it you want to have happen? Do you want people to hire you as a result of this? Do you want people to actually learn how to do something? So, so once you know what your main idea is and what it is you want to have happen, then I help people get all the thoughts they might possibly want to include in this all out. And then I have a systematic way to sort of sort through that and eliminate the noise and really drive towards those goals. So could that be done for a book? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't promise that you're going to walk out with a completed book at the end of three yeah. days. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> but I think it's reasonable to say that if, if what you're doing is creating Many people have a keynote that is a summary of their book. And sometimes the keynote's present, um, developed first and sometimes the book is developed first. But either which way, I think that if, if somebody has that goal in their mind, come and develop the framework for both. Mm. Why not? I love that. You know, I think um, this will appeal to a lot of our um, Jumpstart members. And especially as I think about um, the years, I've almost 20 years now, I've been working with speakers and consultants. I think about those, especially those who are super busy already, um, who it's so hard for them to carve out that time. I love that you can commit to it. You actually hop on a plane and go somewhere with the intention of it. I mean, it's like, it's going to happen. Um, so that, one of the other things that you said about it'll appeal to people who want to develop something I talked with a lot of speakers this year who are very well seasoned, very experienced, have talks that they've been giving. Every professional speaker updates their speech from time to time. Yeah. But I don't know, in those conversations I asked, I said, do you ever have time to actually like revisit from scratch? Yeah. To rethink what this thing is in today's world? Or is it just really kind of tweaking on the fly and they're like, yeah, that's all I have time for. So those people too, who have been speaking on the circuit for many, many years, this is that chance to sort of take a breath and press the reset button and reevaluate. Like, do I want to start this from the fresh set of eyes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have a built-in mastermind community there. So you work on it during the day, that night over dinner, you're going to be, you'll, you'll all be hashing out what, <laughs> what you're working on. I mean, it's just, it feels like such an amazing, amazing opportunity. Um, I don't think, did you share with us what the, what the fee is for the tuition? Sure. It's $23.95 and that's inclusive of all room and board. So you won't have additional food. You won't have additional hotel Nope. Um, you just have a flight to get there and it was a, a three-day retreat yes awesome and it was, is it like an eight to five thing each day or what are the how does that work that is a great question and I'm going to look that up myself because I didn't jot that down ahead of time <laughs> but basically full day or they partial days on the last day or is it full yeah so the idea here is that it's going to run from 3 p.m. Thursday through noon Sunday Okay, so afternoon on Thursday through noon on Sunday. Got so it. People from East Coast can get home. Buy in and take. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, um, Margie, is there anything I haven't asked you that I should have, or anything you want to leave us with? So I did want to share one thing as a teaser of a taste of what the types of things that we might be working on. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I've been having discussions with people recently is everybody knows that it's important to include stories. And so the first thing that people say to me is, should I include a story in my opening or a little bit later on? Very good question. But my question is, why are you including a story? Well, because everybody says you have to do something interesting. Stories are vehicles. 
Stories get us from point A to point B. So let me give you three examples. One story type is to build a relationship with our audience. Mm -hmm. A second story type, yes, is when we want people to buy into using something more than what they're currently doing using a procedure more, using a process more, using a product more. Maybe they've tried it, so we don't have to teach them from scratch, but they're not fully utilizing it. There's a story type that, that allows us to move that audience forward to do that. And the third type that I talk about is to introduce something brand new, something that people haven't been able to do or something that they've never heard of before. And there's a third story type, a framework, that gets people ready and open to hear that message. So the, the, the question isn't a bad one, should I use a story to open up my talk? It's just not quite the right story, right, the right question. So those are the types of things that we'll be talking about. Mm -hmm. What are the three story types that get us those goals and where do they actually fit so that we're not just telling story for decoration, but with intent. That's powerful. Yeah. And, and I love that because it really takes your speaking to the next level. You're not, um, you know, I think as we do more and more speaking, we evolve and, you know, as our business grows, we get to where we understand that for most coaches, mentors, consultants, trainer, whatever you call yourself, <laughs> not speaker, but I'm meaning like on people who on the consulting side, for most people who are consulting, they need to speak yes. in order to grow their consulting business. I mean, that, that's like a primary way to find consulting clients. It's just the reality. So what you're saying is in those presentations, that marketing activity, that speech, or are we out there as a key opinion leader? What you're encouraging us to do is to think about really clearly our objective and use a formula to be able to achieve that objective, which is, of course, ultimately to be seen as a, as a thought leader, as somebody who is the expert that they would want to hire. I mean, I think this is worth uh, so much more than the fee for the workshop because it's something that repetitively you'll use in all of your presentations once you learn these principles. I could not be more excited. I, I love that you're bringing this. I do feel like it's very very different. I feel like it's something that for 15 to 20 years I've thought about or have heard other speakers talk about how I just wish I could carve out some time. So thank you. Thank you for making the space for us. I want to remind everyone of the dates, May 14 to 17, um, July 23 to 26, October 1 through 4. Those are in the Seattle area. Yep. And, and email me, Margie, M-A-R-G-Y at laser pointer presentations. And I will immediately send you the link with all the information and the registration. Dot com, right? Laser pointer presentations.com. And yes. then, um, so it's in the Seattle area, what we're talking about. So when you look at your calendar to decide if you, even if it, the dates work, we start Thursday afternoon at three. So you have time to fly in that morning. And then Sunday we're done by noon. So you have time to get home for the next week. So I love how you've carved that out. That's just really, really smart. Um, I want to encourage everybody um, to, to consider this opportunity. Reach out to Margie, Margie at laserpointerpresentations.com. And Margie, thank you so much for being here and sharing with us. And, and good luck with this workshop. I can't wait to hear about your workshop in May and then to experience it in July. I'm really honored. And thank you. So excited. Super excited. Thank you for this time. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Until next time, be well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.